Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to the zelda -fon. and we are here on uh, day two for A Link to the Past, and we have already beaten our initial donation goal of $1,000, which is amazing, thank you all so much. So now we're going to get a bit daring, and we have bumped the donation goal up to 7000 which I doubt we'll be able to beat uh, within the next few games, or maybe even by the end of the marathon, but hey, it's always nice to have a goal. If you want to donate, please click the donation banner below the stream window, then click the button on the pitch in widget, enter the amount you wish to donate, and finalise the transaction on PayPal. It all goes towards Child's Play, 100% of your donation will go directly to their PayPal account, and your money will be used to purchase games and toys for ill children unable to leave hospital for one reason or another. So, Mixy, your show now. Show us what you can do with A Link to the Past. Go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, just lower... Oh, now game volume too low. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Should have said a little bit sooner on sound balance, but there we go. So, I guess I should erase one of these. <laughs> oh, that noise. It, it, it's like the game just had diarrhea. There's only one acceptable name for A Link to the Past. No speedrunning? Oh, okay. Thank you for bringing that up, because this t intro is pretty long. So here's the thing. I cannot speedrun this game. Not in the slightest. A Link to the Past is one of the, if not the hardest game to speedrun. That is including all classic games, all modern games. It doesn't matter. A Link to the Past is heralded as one of the hardest just to run. And then from that point, to actually optimize. To put into context, most games, when they explain tricks and glitches, they talk about how, oh, this trick saves minutes. Oh, this trick saves seconds. When you're talking about A Link to the Past, glitches at best save frames. People get excited because, oh, this trick saves two frames. That's two thirtieths of a second. That is how insanely optimized this game is. It's crazy. And it's even weirder, too, because the people who speedrun this game, you have Crystal, who is the world record holder, and then you have everyone else. She is on a level all on her own. <laughs> she is minutes yes. ahead of everyone else, and no one can compete. And here's the thing, if you play this game on emulator, it's actually slower than playing it on console. She plays on emulator, she has a disadvantage, and people still cannot even touch her times. It's crazy. Yeah, the different stratas of uh, speedrunners. Yep. She just broke the world record yesterday on a casual run. Like, she was like, oh, this might not break world record. Broke world record. It was a 124 for any percent, no out of bounds, no saving quit. Because the reason this game has a weird category like that is because this game can actually be beaten in, like, two minutes. And mm -hmm. it usually just involves going out of bounds. Because the map for this castle and Ganon's final castle, it's the same map. It's just that, you know, different boxes are in different locations, so they never interact with one another, but they're the same map. So what happens is that during this early sequence, you go out of bounds, and then you go to the room where Ganon is, and... Yeah, there's the game. Have fun, you beat it. So what happens is that, to actually pl for a speedrun that actually plays the game, there's no out of bounds, no save and quit. And the save and quit is usually just, you know, saving the game and then reloading it so that you can get warped to another location. Mm -hmm. that, and that's less broken, but, you know, people just want to keep as much overworld travel in the game as possible, so they included that. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just like our career of time 3D playthrough, like before part six. Where, 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 where it was all speedrun trivia. Well, with this game, it's people bring it up, they're like, don't speedrun, this is like, I won't, but let me explain to you why. This game is bat poop crazy. Mm -hmm. What's your experience with uh, A Link to the Past? Uh, before the magic of emulators, not that much. It was usually just, oh, hey, a friend or a cousin has this game, let me play a little bit of it. Then yeah, I actually got an opportunity uh, to really play it, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Well, 
this is probably one of the Zelda games I've played most recently. Uh, because uh, back in the day when I had a uh, SNES or a Super Nintendo, my mum bought me stuff like, you know, Super Mario World, uh, Sparks, uh, stuff like that. So uh, the first Zelda game I played was either a Link Link's Awakening or Ocarina of Time. I can't remember which one came first. It was probably Link's Awakening. Uh, and I came back years later, played this. It fucking kicked my ass. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. The game casually is... How casual I was, yeah. Yeah, the game casually is difficult. So then that, that's another thing that adds to the difficulty of running this game. Alright, crazy thing about this game, pots are the most destructive thing ever. They do more damage than any sword strike. So you want to just get this guy in the corner with a pot and then slash slash slash. Ah, uh, we have our first few donations in. Let's see, two dollars from Dark Fable, five dollars from the lovable girl, and forty dollars from John Ballard. So thank you very much people, keep them coming, it is all for a good cause. You have to get this lantern because the next uh, event is not is triggered by you having the lantern in your inventory. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, one more really weird thing, because it's like, I might as well get all my all the information I have on this game out there, because I have such a minute, no, I have a minute understanding of this game. I actually don't know a lot, so might as well just get it all done. And because this is the mm -hmm. only point in the game where this actually applies, is that the fastest way to walk in this game is Pegasus Boots. Duh. But... Before you get Pegasus Boots, you have to find another way to actually go faster than the actual walking speed in this game. When Link walks, the game progresses him in a pattern of two pixels, one pixel, two pixels, one pixel. So that's how he normally moves. There's a trick that a lot of people have developed called, uh, what's it called? Uh, wall humping? Yes. Or, yeah, wall pumping. Wall hump I've heard both. I've heard that's wall pumping. I've heard wall pumping and wall, uh, humping. And what it, the way it works is that you essentially, every so often on uh, specific frames, you press a direction that he's not moving in, and what that does is that that cancels that 2-1 sequence and starts it over. So rather than going 2 pixels, 1 pixel, 2 pixel, 1 pixel, you go 2, cancel, 2, cancel, 2, cancel. And you instead move Link a lot faster than he normally does. Oh, my poor spider brain. Okay, we have a comment from uh, John who uh, donated the forty dollars. He says, "Hi, hi, thanks, John. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks." And we have another twenty dollars from Acid Drago. Thank you very much, mate. Oh, wait, wait, and another twenty dollars from Russell Hurricane Hockey. Wow, that name. An awesome name. But yeah. Oh, jeez, my B-butt. Oh, well. No, oh, we're done. Get out of here. <laughs> Someone says, can you demonstrate the wall humping? I have been. <laughs> How would you see it? It's <laughs> How you... along those walls. Uh, it, it, it's such a minute little thing, but yeah, I've been doing it. I've only like really done it correctly for like five or so steps, but yeah, I've been doing it. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah, it, like I said, it's such a minute little thing, but like I said, this game is so optimized that the the tiny amount of frames that it saves is like oh my god you have to do this it's like there, there's no if ands or buts it's not an optional thing mm -hmm. cease and desist the wall humping can't it's man. not illegal and high roll it's all good it's okay the princess approves which yeah uh, princess zelda in the very very beginning of the game i mean it's not as dreadful as in zelda 2 where you know she's in the beginning of the game she's asleep but she's there mm. but it's not like she's gonna do anything uh, just to put things into perspective of what we've heard so far in the first 10 minutes we have earned 87 dollars nice Keep it coming, people. All for a good cause. And uh, after we complete this game, there'll be 13 more games in the Zelda fun. So at this point in the game, 
Uh, Zelda and this priest guy are like, man, we need to stop Aghanim, but we don't know how. You should go talk to this one guy. And then what happens is that when you talk to that one guy, he's like, I don't know how to stop Aghanim, you should go talk to this other guy. And then you talk to this other guy, and he's like, shoo, I don't know how to stop him either. Maybe you should just go to some dungeons or something. <laughs> Why don't you just buy a gun and shoot him in the head? Exactly. But the thing is, is that the talking to the those two guys, none of them are actual triggers. So I'm not going to talk to either. I'm just going to go straight to the dungeon. Fuck them. I'm sorry, someone just asked me how long it takes me to do a speed run of Ocarina of Time, but I'm just sitting there giggling. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, it's kind of a cool thing that A Link to the Past does where the story and the hand-holding are two very different things. I mean, a lot of people, especially like with this generation of gaming console, it's like, oh, you can't have story without hand-holding. It's like, then how are you going to like enjoy the game? The the developers have to keep you on track for the story and this game essentially spits in the face of that concept it's like no the story is there if you want it if you don't want it then fuck it and go play the game i know right and um also for those of you guys who watched my zelda one run and how well prepared i was despite being slow at it um this playthrough's not going to be anything like that. <laughs> I'm not as well versed in this game. I haven't done as many practice runs in this. And up until, what was it, last week? I didn't even know I was going to be running this game. Yeah, this was a uh, sudden change. One of our uh, other streamers who shall remain nameless had a uh, sudden catastrophic computer failure or equipment failure, whatever. He never specified. I've had, We've all had them, and so you can't blame them. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna essentially play around in Kakariko for a bit. And by that I mean I'm I might actually be doing some stuff. Get some bombs. Oh, cool thing too. Uh, this is also before the Zelda games got stupid and we're like, you need a bomb bag in order to hold bombs. It's like, nah. If you wanna, if you wanna hold explosives, just find them. Yeah. How soon do you get the boots? You get the boots after the first uh, pendant. It's you can't get them anywhere else. You get them from the sage dude. Ah, some call me Johnny's in the chat. Excellent work on your Zelda 2 run yesterday, mate. Also, you want to minimize uh, movement in water. It's slightly slower, but nah, who cares? How long do I think I'll take with Link to the Past? No idea. Let's just all enjoy the ride for how long it lasts. Well, the longer you take, the more possibilities we can earn donations for child's place. I later. guess. Right. Sorry. Boop. Another donation of $2 from Nat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Push the block. Leg push the block. Oh, forget it. To be fair, if you push blocks as many times as he does, he'd probably get sick of it after a while. Well, and his face turns bright red, so it can't be that pleasant. Yeah. Oops. Oh, I just threw a boomerang at the wall. There's a piece of heart. In the woods, in the center of those bushes. I got that one already. That's the uh, thief's hideout heart. Nice. Go in the hole, Link. In the hole, bro. Are you going to be visiting uh, Chris Houlihan's room? Uh, nah. Also, this guy... Is, is, that, is that like a bit too RNG or something? No, it's just I don't know how to get there. And it's you gotta essentially hack the game and shit. Or you use yeah. out of bounds, and I don't, I don't know how to do any of the out of bounds. Uh, take note of what this guy says. Uh, the leader of the thieves was named Blind. He hated light a lot. So we'll, we'll remember that for a later day. Okay. I have the overworld theme on a constant loop. I mm. will be one with this game by the time this playthrough is done. 
and I got a magic bottle. What's magic about it? It's made of glass. Which, let's face, in the land of Hyrule, that in and of itself is a commodity, so... True, true. Alright, so I'm gonna go in this little shack, kill some rats. And the only thing about the shack is that it's a guaranteed bomb and arrow refill, which is pretty cool considering that in the previous game I ran, I had to essentially manipulate an unseen item counter to get bombs. <laughs> true. So, thank you, game, for this. Well, secret caches are always nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have not is I have not been playing for very long. Well, you haven't even, uh, well, I, I guess you could technically call the castle the first dungeon. Some people do. I guess I'm just running around here getting items and whatnot, because I can. Also, I like this guy's reason. He's going to give me the butterfly net, and he's literally just because I'm sick and can't go catch bugs, so here, take my bug catching equipment. It's like, dude, just wait till you get better. The bugs aren't going anywhere. I think the pink of Link's heart is meant to be the brim of his cap. No, he has pink hair. Nah, it's, it's his brim, yes. Yeah. But uh, there's always that art that has Link with pink hair, and it's always better than all the other art, so we'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, Tom will not be doing Ganondor in Ocarina of Time 3D, and in fact, Ganondor is a lot, lot more difficult in 3D. It's also a completely different trick that involves completely different steps, so, no. Yep. These two brothers are dumb. They argue about how, eh, I hate my brother. I hate my brother. It's like, you have a wall between you two. Quit being annoying. <laughs> Why don't you just, like, move to the other side of town if you hate him that much? I know, it's like, why share the same house? Probably was inherited or something. Possibly. And the point of this heart piece is you gotta get to this guy in less than 15 seconds, which is super easy when you just jump over the fence, skipping half the course. Yeah. Oh, this area reminds me a lot of, uh, Soleil, or Soleil, or Crusader Ascentra, I think it's called in America. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to say, like, I have not, I am not <laughs> yeah, too... the Genesis Zelda-like game. Gotcha, that game. You know the one with the animals that give you certain abilities and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What is that, Altered Beast? <laughs> sure, why not? I had Sonic chill on a beach. Oh. Don't ask, just blow it. Oh, wait, no. I was mistaken this little area. That's to the uh, ghost flute boy, who will be important later. Okay, we have a donation of nine dollars and ninety-nine cents from HFC livestream regular Vodka Hayes. Thank you very much, and uh, I will forever fret about that one cent. Thank you very much. Damn. <laughs> So here's one of those points where, yes, you could just save and quit and teleport to the sanctuary. Uh, you know what? I won't bother with that. I know it is faster, but, you know, overworld. Overworld traveling is such fun. I guess. Like, it's one of those weird things. Like, I just don't get why they're so pedantic about no saving quit. Because it's not like there's even any glitches that require saving quit as, like, the first step. Out of my way! Oh, that guy's serious about his job. Oh yeah. And I went the wrong way. Well, I actually technically went the right way, but I, I wanted to do something else before I even hit that first dungeon. Mm -hmm. Gonna kill some Octoroks. Did it in the last game. Gonna keep doing it in this game. Well, we'll be doing it a lot on Thursday when uh, Dark Amazer plays through. Let's see what the names of the games: Wand of Gamelon and Faces of Evil, the CDI games. Oh joy! <laughs> What's your favorite Zelda game? Is there someone in the chat? Mine is this or Majora's Mask. Preach it, my edgy brother. And then number two. 
And then after those two, I don't know if you would technically call that two or three, but after that is Spirit Tracks, which that tends to surprise a lot of people, but Spirit Tracks is really good. I mean, most of the time when people say, oh, it's just as bad as Phantom Hourglass, it's like, you clearly did not play Spirit Tracks if you're making that crude assumption. Wait, I need to choose some different music soon. Yeah, it's not that bad of a game. It's n I'm not saying that it's the best, but it's definitely the g a game that, when I played it, I enjoyed a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Ah, running away. Yes, Phantom Hourglass was a bad game. Please explain why it's a good one without mentioning Lineback, if you can, please, because that's story related. Yeah, and Lineback is in uh, Spirit Tracks, and in fact, he's more emotional, or you get a more emotional heart tug in Spirit Tracks from Lineback. Mm hmm. Which you will see when uh, I play both of the DS games. So here's the part where you're supposed to go talk to. Uh, the sage Shalashishka Shashalalamala? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Sasparilla. Sasparilla, yeah. <laughs> Shalashishka Shashalakala Asalat. Why are we ignoring the BS Zelda games in the Zelda phone? Uh, okay, because BS Zelda is just a graphical update of Zelda 1, which I already played, with different dungeons, which I did not want to reroute a new dungeon layout. So that is why. Mm -hmm. I mean, just watch Zelda 1. That's BS Zelda. The graphical update is very good. I will be the first to admit that, that it was one of the most welcoming additions was when they put a graphical update to Zelda 1. But other than that, don't need it. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a, is a fanfic sequel to A Link to the Past. No, literally, it's a self it's a self insert fanfic where it's like you don't play as Link, you play as random guy, random girl in post a link to the past Hyrule. So yeah. I ain't touching that with a six foot barge pole. I wanna kill these stuffos. Give me things. Yeah, magic's okay. Do, do, do. Get out of here. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Link to the Past 2, or A Link Between Worlds to use its actual name, doesn't interest me in the slightest. So there's a way that you can actually prevent all these stuffos from spawning. It involves throwing like the pot in a specific area. It's one of the spawn points of the stuffos. And like it's weird because I think it's that the pot animation overrides like the stuffos appearing animation, and then like just the rest of them don't spawn in the room. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a help tablet. Not necessary. It's just. Solid Shishkasha telling you, Yo, you made it to the right dungeon. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> it's like, I've been here for a while. Oh, so they're like the owl statues from uh, Link's Awakening. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I didn't catch that one. Oh, well. Well, we have a few new donations. Uh, one cent from Dionysus, thank you, or Dionysus, I guess. Uh, Five dollars and one cent from uh, David Rainbowy Cole, and one cent from Wimberly Wilson. Thank you very much. I wanted those five rupees, and now I cannot have them. But that is okay. Uh, okay, trying to find that key. Yeah, that's another thing, guys. Most of these puzzles are pretty easy when it's like, oh, you know to know which pot the key is under. I don't have those memorized. I would. I should. But I don't. <laughs> so, this is going to be a fun run through of the game. Mm -hmm. Am I hearing your dog in the background, Maxi? Yes, that's why I kind of muted my mic there for a bit. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. You probably saw a squirrel. 
All right, here's a trick. If you damage boost off one of these like uh, tentacle things, you can actually clip through those like orby thingies, thus skipping having to kill all these enemies. Oh yeah. I will not do that. I will just throw a pot at this guy. Because once again, pots are so OP. I don't know if it's like a programming oversight or intended, but oh man, pots. Get on their level. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, those guys drain your magic, which is lame. And this is the big key, which is a precursor to the boss key, except that the pre the big key is also used on certain doors, and it's used on certain chests. So it's actually more useful than the boss key. It's sort of like a halfway marker of the dungeon. And you get the bow in the first dungeon, a lot like First Legend of Zelda. I should bring all my cats in and get major donations. You should do that. I'm gonna be right back. Watch watch this pause screen, it's exciting. I'll be right back. Isn't it amazing? Look at that flashing circle. Pool for school. Meanwhile I'm just here looking up the uh, Zelda timeline. And the problem has been resolved. Awesome. I was just about to discuss the Zelda timeline, as A Link to the Past is the first game of the uh, Death Hero is Defeated. Ah, uh, okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna start this. Let let's start this. First of all, no. You you guys have opened a very dangerous box. So here's the thing: the Hero is Defeated is a mistranslation. I'm gonna put that out there. The accurate translation of that third timeline is actually the hero does not succeed, which is has very different connotations to is defeated, and in fact makes a lot of sense. I mean, let, let's face it, the hero does not win can mean a billion things. Maybe Link decided to settle down with Malon. Maybe Link decided to settle down with Ruta. Maybe Link just went to sleep and didn't wake up. Link could have done a billion other things in the world and actually go through with killing Ganon. But is killed or, you know, is defeated? No. It merely means that Link did... Link was not the one to defeat Ganon. Which makes sense when you look at A Link to the Past. And this is an oversight that every single little fan timeline seems to completely forget. In all other previous Zelda games where Ganon has previously existed, it says, oh, he was defeated by the boy clad in green or whatever. But it's usually that a previous Link won. Not in A Link to the Past. The backstory of A Link to the Past is that knights and sages defeated, not didn't defeat, but locked up Ganon. So, in no way can you put A Link to the Past accurately behind any other game that has a previous Link, because Link wasn't the one who beat Ganon before Link to the Past. Link wasn't, or Ganon wasn't even defeated previous to A Link to the Past. He was just sealed. So, it works better that, you know, Link doesn't win, therefore, the knights and sages have to take over and seal him. Are you done? Uh, pretty much, unless you have anything to add to that. Um, well, Zelda's 1 and 2 are uh, actually at the end of this particular timeline, so there you go. Yeah. Ah, aiming is a bit hot tricky in this game. Uh, we had a $15 donation from Wimbley Wilson. Thank you very much. So that that that's my thing. There is that. There, yes, you could like try and rationalize it a billion other ways, but honestly, the way that that Nintendo did it is actually an Occam's razor. Like, is that you know what? Just Link doesn't win. There we go. Instead of making all these other assumptions and stuff. I mean, Nintendo could do something very stupid and be like, hey, we're going to make the next game where Link isn't the one who beats Ganon, and instead it's the Knights and Sages, which is very, very stupid. The dumbest thing Nintendo could do is to actually cater to the timeline and make games for the purpose of the timeline making sense. So, no. You mean, you mean like that did with Skyward Sword? Exactly.
<laughs> nice run on that boss, by the way. Thanks. I messed it up a bit. You can actually skip the uh, statue's phase where he turns red. But, mm -hmm. eh, it, the fact that I didn't die, you're going to hear that a lot. Hey, I didn't die, therefore I don't completely suck.